there is a shanti pata in our upanishad what is that shanti pata om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyade purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyade see you can speak of addition and subtraction division and multiplication with regard to limited things when you go to the level of infinity as a concept or an idea you tell me infinity multiplied by infinity how much is it infinity divided by infinity infinity taken away from infinity infinity added to infinity boli see multiplication division addition subtraction it is all possible from 1 to 9 but when it comes to zero on the one hand and infinity on the other none of these processes is ever relevant or applicable you think of the whole universe what whole universe from the whole universe can you take another whole universe huh? why is it that you refuse to think i don't understand you are living in the house bodily but your mind can fly to any level see earth is limited water is limited air is limited different forms of energy like fire etc like they are also limited but when it comes to akasha the space and the sky is it limited no huh? no now you are thinking of something very infinite in character infinite in character if at all this is born it can only have been it could only have been born from another infinite purnamada if at all there is a source for the endless world that source should necessarily have been or is endless from an endful can an endless be made boli ana thoda why don't you think immediately you say it is abstract abstract is not your mind abstract yes ha boli ana is not your mind abstract intelligence abstract are you not functioning with them from by them so why do you why are you afraid of this abstract your mind is abstract your inner personality is abstract and you are living and moving with it every time every experience is abstract so don't say abstract and escape from the understanding process so the four budhas are limited finite but the akasha is infinite now the infinite akasha could not have sprung from a finite cause so the source must be infinite if the source is infinite even from the en- even when the endless universe comes out of it what will be the remainder you tell me om purnamadaha purnamidam purnad purnamudachyade see the concepts are absolutely transcendental from the infiniteness from the infinitude from the fullness fullness has come when the fullness comes fullness alone remains there you cannot go there with your petty calculations and computer and calculator calculators everything is all right in the limited sphere but when you once you go to the source level to the source level can there be such an infinity if you ask me i say your mind itself is infinite so many thoughts and emotions knowledge memory and concepts are produced by the mind and is the mind exhausted by it or it is more revealing thereby is not the mind infinite then how many thoughts are produced and no reduction takes place in the source in the mind level so you are carrying something infinite in you this inner personality is infinite infinitude 
So oneness is the only truth. Nothing else. Nothing else. When you strike this oneness, all problems cease. What will you desire? What will you desire? I am reminded of the last assurance Krishna has given in Bhagavad Gita. What is that? Sarva dharman parityajya maam egam sharanam raja aham tuva sarva pabebhyo moksha ishyami maashucha All people quote this verse. None of them understands it. Understanding is not necessary also. Because they are feeling very comfortable with that assurance of Krishna. So I am questioning what? What authority does Krishna have to give such an assurance and such a pradhyajna? Because Krishna is gone. Can he liberate us? Has any one of you thought in this manner? No, you will not think. We are all blank in our intelligence. Completely hypothecated our intelligence. See, Krishna was born more than 5100 years have passed after he has left his body. And if in his Gita he has made this assurance, it is not the physical Krishna who will come and protect you. Then what is, what is the veracity in his statement? What is the truth of his proposition? I don't know whether you are interested in this discussion. Huh? What is the authority for Krishna to make such a proposition? I can also make it. It is intrinsic in the very statement. What did he say? Sarva dharman parityajya. You may have a variety of notions about what is to be done. Dharma, dharma. The do's, the don'ts. The do's you may have. A variety of them. Now because it is a variety, sarva, all those notions you abandon. What? The very idea of sarva, many, all, that you abandon. Maam egam sharanam raja. And take recourse to me, the one. Now stripped of all the adjectives, what does it mean? Leave and, leave and surrender manyness from your mind. And hold on to oneness. This is the meaning. Now, when anybody leaves many and holds on to one, that itself is liberation. So, is not Krishna's statement true? Yes. Either you should be simple or innocent to understand this, or you should be intelligent and supra-intelligent to understand it. Either you must be innocent to understand this statement, or you should be extremely intelligent to understand what I say. Tell me what you are. Sarva dharman parityajya Whether it is dharma, x or y Sarva, that notion of sarva should be avoided Maam egam sharanam raja Maam means Krishna It is not referring to Krishna, he is egam maam Me the single, me the one You accept Then aham tuva sarva babe bhyo moksha vishyami maashuja When you have left your sarva then why, what is the necessity for liberation? If there is only oneness, that oneness cannot bind. That cannot bring any bondage for the one. It is only that one. So when the mind leaves the many idea and nurtures and becomes one with the oneness idea, that oneness itself is liberation. No Krishna need come and liberate us. This is the meaning of his statement. I don't know whether you have understood. Very rarely I explain it like this. Kya aapko kuch acha lagta hai kya? Dekh lijiye na. Hamare shastro mein sab kuch isi prakar hai. Every statement is intrinsically true. Intrinsically true. It is not that Krishna is going to liberate you. He has not said anything new. But he has put his own stamp of approval so that the ordinary people, ha, main Krishna bhakt hoon. Isi liye Krishna se sara kuch kaam hooga. कुछ नहीं होगा अपने मन से हो रहा है सी द पावर ऑफ द माइंड आई ऑलवेज इलेस्ट्रेटेड बाय वन एक्साम्पल व्हाट इज दैट एगलेविया वेंट टू द्रोना 
and wanted to be a disciple of his. Drona said, you cannot be, because I will not teach you at all. You are not a Kshatriya. Every guru has got the prerogative to accept or reject a disciple. He rejects a disciple when he understands that there is going to be some danger. Because he is imparting a knowledge which is very, very fatal in nature. Very powerful. And once you have imparted the knowledge, you cannot take it back. It's a very dangerous proposition. Samaste hai kya? Once I have... You know, the cat started teaching the tiger all kinds of tricks it knew. After learning the tricks, the cat is small and the tiger is big. So the tiger decided to pounce upon the cat and catch hold off. <laughs> Thank God, cat had not taught one trick, climbing the tree. <laughs> so the cat climbed the tree, therefore the tiger became helpless. So you understand what it is to teach the dangerous art of archery to people. Very dangerous. So he apprehended some danger. And therefore he said, I will not talk to you, I will not teach you. So he was rejected by Drona. But you know, Egalavya was so loyal and so great in his mind. He was great, no doubt. But maybe he, were, he was not all that good. He was great. So he said, my dear sir, you have rejected me. But my mind cannot reject you. So I reject your rejection. <laughs> and he went away. I am your disciple and you are my guru. There is no change in it. You have refused me. That is your prerogative. I am not going to accept the refusal. He went away. You should listen to me with added ears. I have explained it on rare occasions. Now, Egalavya went away and he was alone in a forest. He made a clay model of Drona, kept it, started worshipping that model and practicing the archery right in front of it. And you know, this little boy excelled in his learning. And wonderful Drona never knew about it. That is the important point here. Suppose it is God, you will say God knows. Here Drona never knew. He forgot the entire Egalavya. Many, many years passed. Arjuna was his chosen disciple and he said, you are the biggest warrior, the best of my disciples. Then one day, when they were staying in the forest, Arjuna used to meander there, travel there. So he found. What is this? This boy, he is discharging five and ten arrows from the same bow at the same time using his thumb. In five, six different directions. This is something that Arjuna never knew. He could only discharge one arrow and pierce a particular target. Here is a boy who... Pop, pop, divergent arrows are being sent. Who is What is this? He was very dejected, disappointed, came back to Drona and said, you anointed me as the best disciple, but here I find somebody excelling me. Now what shall I do? And we are going to fight a very, very serious war also. So Drona went to him and said, who is your Guru Drona? Then I asked for the Guru Dakshina, give me your thumbs. He cut and gave. Just see, he stood by his devotion. He had no problem. For me, Dronacharya is everything. Now, what I want you to understand is, I don't know how much time I should stop here to make you understand. See, the excellence that Egalavya attained, in that excellence, did Drona have any part to play? No. The physical Drona had no part to play at all. He only made a clay model. So this excellence is directly proportional to the attitude, the exclusiveness of Egalavya's mind. Mind. This is what Krishna also says. Leave all thoughts of men and foster only the one thought of oneness. 
when all are left and one is held you are liberated and he puts his stamp of approval to make people understand so that they can keep a photograph of krishna and then say krishna will liberate me krishna will not liberate you as long as you will not leave the many and preserve the one am i clear or not that is why your swami tells god my dear god there are so many different versions about you some people say you are some people say you are not now i am not worried about whether you are or you are not i am happy to think that you are what ha boliye na i am happy to think that you are it is my business i think that you are others may say that you are not so whether you are or not this question never occurs to me i believe and i understand that you are and i am happy now who can shake me from my happiness i am happy i am happy thinking about you i am happy speaking about you i am happy contemplating upon you i am happy relying upon you all these are my and my own minds affair and i am happy whether you are happy with me that is your look out if you are happy with me well and good compliments to you if you are unhappy with me i am sorry for you you understand my point yes. no yes. ab ye soch kar aapko kya lagta hai main pagal hu kya <laughs> boliye na thoda boliye see the clarity of thought that i am having in this matter is so much that i cannot be shaken by anybody even by god see i am happy thinking about you if you are happy thinking about me it is your look out i have nothing to say i am very happy i don't know of anybody else to rely upon so this life i can only rely upon you suppose you are not there and i have some other birth i may look for somebody else but this life it's all gone just see the clarity with which the facility with which the simpleness with which i hold on to this proposition you know i know of people who always say re bhagava <laughs> see many songs are crying songs i always felt can there not be a smiling song god is so beautiful and nice so whenever we think of him and speak of him we should be very very happy and jubilant but most of the songs you will be re bhagavan tum kab aaoge <laughs> so i composed a song i said my dear god today is the best and the most auspicious day and this moment is super best please come let us join together and have a dance and a song and a play <laughs> see i am playing with god always playing with god and all the scriptures are before us around us to give us a confirmation and an assertion on this so this is the way you should think oneness 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 that bheda buddhi is the sinfulness a sense of differentialness that will occupy you so he says yat kinjit pasyato bhedam bhayam brude yajushuti hi whoever sees more than one either two or many for him there is only fear 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 as long as there is oneness there is no fear the moment the mind breeds two or many there is fear and he refers to yajushruti in ayurveda there is an upanishad called taittiriya upanishad in the taittiriya upanishad it is said yadahi eva eshah etasmin adrishye anatme anirukte anilayane abhayam pratishtha vindade अभयम प्रतिष्ठा विंदे यदा एषस्म अदृश्ये अनात्मे अनिरुक्ते अनिलयने ऑल दीस आर एजेक्टिव्स ऑफ द वनस ऑफ द सुप्रीम रियालिटी व्हाट आर दी एजेक्टिव्स अदृश्ये इनविसिबल गॉड इज ऑलवेज इनविसिबल द ट्रूथ इज इनविसिबल दई कैनॉट सी एनीथिंग बिहाइंड यू 
It cannot see anything fully. Only in one direction it can see. The ear is not complete. Everything is outward in its function, in its power and supremacy. The senses are very powerful in their respective field, but they cannot cover all and everything. So, adrishye, anatmye, these are very strange words. Something that is non-bodily. The supreme reality is not a person, a personal. It is impersonal. It is invisible. Anirukte. It cannot be described amply in words. Our words can describe only things which are outside, which our senses perceive. Which senses cannot perceive, we cannot describe. Then, Anilayane, Anilayane, which does not have any other source of dependence. That itself is the supreme source. Abhayam Pratishtha Vindade, only in such a thing there is fearlessness, fearlessness. The world itself is fearful, frightening. When you are able to transcend, see when you go into sleep, the entire body is suspended, not known. Everything is not known. Do you have any fear there? Huh? If somebody cuts your neck completely, you will not know about it at all. So there is a state of oneness when no fear occurs at all. There is no doubt about it. Athaso abhayam gato bhavadi when you are able to contemplate upon this and actualize this truth, then Athaso abhayam gato bhavadi he reaches a state of fearlessness, fear freeness. Yada ahye vaishaya yadasmin udaram antaram gurude yada hi e eva eshaha. But the moment, moment, the moment in the womb of infinitude. What did I say? Thoda boi na. In the womb of infinitude. Yada ahye vaishaya yadasmin udaram. In that womb of infinitude, antaram kurude, you breathe or you create the least notion of difference. The least notion of difference. See, the scale. You make a few pictures and place them on the surface of the earth. Each picture will occupy one place. And the earth is apparently divided by that. Put them in water, then also the wall of the picture will divide and separate the water. Air also will be separated. But by the placement of the picture, do you think sky and space can be divided? Why are you not thinking? Say, division is possible in the solid level, fluid level, gaseous level. Division is not possible in the spatial level. In the similar, in the, similarly, yada hi eva eshaha etasmin udaram antaram gurude. In the womb of the infinite space, if you make a division, atatasya bhayam bhavadi. What? That division, that division, that differential outlook instantly brings fear. 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 Tatveva bhayam vidusho amanvanasya. Unless you are able to experientially get confirmed in this oneness, this fear will continue. Even if you are an intellectual, you have studied the whole of the scriptures, even then it is of no purpose at all. The fear will continue. There is a Brihadaridnya Gopanishad. Brihadaridnya Gopanishad. In that Upanishad, Yatnavalkya and Maitreyi, they are a very good couple, oft quoted couple. Yatnavalkya, when he grew up in age, he decided one day to leave everything and take to a life of contemplation, spiritual contemplation. So he had two wives, Katyayani and Maitreyi, called both of them and said, I am going away. I would like to divide the property equally between you. Take it and I am going away. Katyayani was very happy. Yes, I have got half the property now. I can exercise all the freedom. Maitra, he said, My dear Lord, 
you are saying that you are dividing the property and giving to us and you are going for contemplation so this property you are leaving and obviously you are taking to something still greater what is that greater treasure that you are going after i would like to know please share it with me how many women are here who will say like this i don't think any one of you will say like this mujhe to mila acha hua so far my husband was a restraining force now i can go to the shop to any extent and buy any material i want so you please go the children must have a mother so this is what they will say maitre he said like that and then he entered into a conversation what is it that he is going to contemplate upon and at one point he says yatra hi dvaidam iva bhavati tad idara idaram jighadi pashyadi shrunodi abhivadati manude vijahanadi my dear maitre as long as there is a state of oneness everything is okay suppose it is not so yatra hi dvaidam iva bhavati 